The demiurge of the hive is the worm. The demiurge of the vex is the thought. The demiurge of the fallen is the ether, which is survival. The demiurge of the cabal is authority. These are the things, both constraint and power, which define the universe of possible actions. Welcome back, Guardians. Thanks to I Have Toes on Twitter for sending me a link to the Destiny Sets website, which listed a new exotic ship, a thousand wings. Considering its hive aesthetic and its transmat effect is taken arrival, most assume that this is the ship that will be rewarded for completing the enigmatic blueprint received in the Whisper Heroic Strike. Of course, with the ship comes a new lore tab, and today we're going to discuss the significance of this lore tab. The lore tab is authored by Ulan Tan, so I will give a brief recap of this character before discussing the lore tab. As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was created by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations go towards paying for the artwork. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. Let's first discuss Ulan Tan. Ulan Tan is most noted in the lore for his theories on the light. One of those theories is that all light is connected. This is demonstrated in the Destiny 1 mission, Chamber of Night, where we find a piece of the Traveler that the Hive were draining of light. Even though it was separated from the Traveler, it still shared a link with the Traveler, and hence draining the light from the Shard also drained the light from the Traveler. The Grimoire card reads, your discovery is perhaps the greatest of our time. If the Hive were able to infect the Traveller through this long lost shard of its battered shell, Ulan Tan's theory may be true. All light remains connected across space and time. We cannot let our enemies use this power against us. Ikora Ulantan further postulates that his theory can explain the void and also justify how Sunsingers can return from the grave. Have a listen. Therefore, if light connects us across space and time, what is the void? What role does the vacuum, the absence play? What stops the darkness from entering into the places between the stars? The answer is simple. The void is just another type of light. Ulan Tan. And this, the Sun Singer is proof that the light is everywhere. The wings of radiance allow a guardian to fly beyond the veil. What further proof do you need, speaker? Ulan Tan. So Ulan Tan's first theory is that all light is connected across space and time. The second theory that he proposes is that light cannot exist without darkness, that there must be symmetry between those two forces. This is told to us in the Darkness Grimoire card and the Symmetry Flight Law tab. The Darkness Grimoire card reads, Ulan Tan's thesis considers the darkness as a necessary symmetry to the Traveller in a cosmic balance. And the Symmetry Flight Law tab reads, To have light we must have dark. This is the symmetry of the universe. Controversial Warlock Ulan Tan. I propose a simple experiment. Look around. You see light. You see darkness. They could not be one without the other. They are two sides of the same coin. If it is true for these Newtonian echoes, why would it not be true for the purest paracausal forms? Therefore, I conclude, the reason you persecute me is not because of the symmetry, it's because of the truth beyond this truth, the truth which you most dread. If you could destroy darkness, but we had to give up our light to do so, how many of us would make that trade? Ulan Tan implies that the light and dark are two sides of the same coin, and that we could not truly destroy the darkness without removing the light, and if there was a choice, how many guardians would give up the light? In addition to his theories on the light, I assume Ulan Tan led the faction known as the Symmetry. The Symmetry was never allowed to join the consensus because the Vanguard believed Ulan Tan's teachings were too dangerous. Future Walcott was a faction that was selected instead of the Symmetry. 
So with Ulan Tan's theories in mind, one, light is connected across space and time, and two, light and darkness must coexist, let's read the new lore tab for A Thousand Wings. Demiurge of the Hive is the Worm, the Demiurge of the Vex is the Thought, the Demiurge of the Fallen is the Aether, which is survival, the Demiurge of the Cabal is authority. These are the things, both constrained and power, which define the universe of possible actions. These are the rule makers and the instruments which enforce reality. Give a power to a guardian and they shall know that power as a weapon. For when a guardian chooses to alter the world, they do so with the bullet and the blade. Grant a guardian godly power and that guardian shall fashion it into a perfect rifle. The demiurge of the guardian is the gun. But we must remember that the demiurge is not the god. It is only the thing which converts perfect divine will into perfect material form. We may wield the demiurge, but if we do, what god wields us? Ulan Tan. Demiurge can have a couple different meanings, and it is more commonly defined as being a creator, a being who creates and maintains the physical universe. However, the Lord Tab itself defines how it is using the word Demiurge by saying it is something that gives power, but also constraints. For example, the hive worms, the worm gives the hive power, but the hive are forced to keep killing in order to feed their worm, otherwise the worm consumes them. Therefore, it also constrains the hive. The Demiurge therefore becomes something that enforces reality. The Law Tab also describes that the Demiurge is not the God, but rather a material representation of divine will, i.e. it represents a God. So once again, using the worms as an example, the Hive Worms are not a God, they are not the darkness itself, but they represent the will of the darkness. So with this in mind, the Law Tab describes how Guardian's Demiurge is the gun that we alter the world with bullet and blade. And so, if the gun is a demiurge, then whose will are we fulfilling? Whose bidding are we doing? The Law Tab says we may wield the demiurge, but if we do, what god wields us? I am sure that most of you have worked out where this is going by now, and that is Ulan Tan is implying that we use the sword logic, altering our world with bullet and blade, and by using weapons, we don't really represent the light. In fact, we are much more aligned with the darkness. For those who have read the Books of Sorry, you could argue that there is very little difference between the Hive and Guardians. Oryx did what he needed to do to survive. Guardians do the same. Assuming that this ship does in fact drop in the Whisper mission, the same mission that gave us Whisper of the Worm, the sniper rifle with Zol's head as the muzzle break, then I assume that this law tab adds further evidence that by wielding Whisper of the Worm, we are either representing Zol, or continuing Zol's work, or feeding Zol energy from killing. For more information on that theory, see my Whisper of the Worm video. Ulan Tan is suggesting that we do not represent the light, that we more closely represent the darkness. Considering Ulan Tan's other theories, I wonder how this affects the balance. Who is representing the light if we are not? Have we created imbalance by adhering to the sword logic? At this stage, we cannot be sure, but I am sure that the Vanguard will continue to consider Ulan Tan's theories dangerous and troublesome. For the city. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word Demiurge. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.